Hey guys, it is Andy, and today we are going over Texas Chainsaw 3D. This came out in 2013. Before we get into it though, I do want to say that if you like this look, it was filmed over on my TikTok, which will be linked in the description, as well as all of my other socials, and also everything that I am wearing will be in the description box below. I would love to see you over there. But now again, Texas Chainsaw 3D, this came out in 2013, and it has an IMDb rating of 4.8 out of 10, which honestly, I feel is pretty on par for this movie. Um, spoiler alert, I don't like this remake. It's just, it, uh, it doesn't jive for me, but we will get into that. The storyline. After first, the first massacre in 1974, the townspeople suspected that the Sawyer family were responsible. A vigilante mob of enraged locals surrounded the Sawyer house, burning it to the ground and killing every last member of the family. Decades later, a young woman named Heather learns that she has inherited an estate from her grandmother. She decides to bring her friends along on the road trip to investigate her inheritance. On arrival, she discovers she has inherited a mansion, but is yet to uncover the terrors that lurk in the basement underneath. So... Firstly, I'm gonna I'm personally gonna rank this one a two out of ten. It would be a three out of ten, but I just I don't like 3D movies. I don't think they add anything. They're quite gimmicky, in my opinion. Um, I like that it's I like the backstory to this one. I feel like it is an interesting take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. But I don't know. I just... This one, it, it just didn't jive for me. Just the pacing of the movie, how they go about it. Um, it was just... It wasn't for me. And that's totally okay. Um, we have some trivia here. In 2007, Platinum Dunes announced they were abandoning the series following the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, which is the video we covered last in 2009 twisted pictures negotiated a multi-picture deal with robert coon and kim henkel who own the rights to the series this direct sequel to the texas chainsaw massacre 1974 this is a direct sequel and ignores all of the other sequels and doesn't include the remakes produced by new line cinema so starting with this movie and moving forward we're technically in a different timeline than the other remakes that we have covered i do like that this is supposed to be be a sequel to the original and in that aspect it it adds more to the story in the movie but I just it it isn't needed um I don't know it, it's one of those things it's just not my cup of tea I can see people really enjoying the storyline of this movie like I completely get it but it just it ain't for me though this is a little more on the gory side for their movies. This, I'm just trying to get all my thoughts organized here. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 deaths in this movie. So if you're not a fan of gore... This isn't going to be up there because some of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies are more gory than others. That's just the genre. Not everybody fits in the bad bitch genre. It's a genre. Sorry, TikTok. It, it always be stuck in my head. But we have unnamed female Sawyer relative was shot and burned to death by a Burt Ollie Officer Marvin and their gang. We have unnamed male Sawyer relative number one, same kind of death. Unmain male Sawyer relative number two, same death. Boss Sawyer, same death. Bear Sawyer, same death. Drayton Sawyer, same death. Unnamed male Sawyer relative number three, same death. Grandpa Sawyer was shot by the gang. Loretta Sissy Sawyer was kicked in the face by Gavin, who then raised her daughter Edith and named her Heather. Verna Sawyer Carson died of old age off screen. Daryl bashed on the head repeatedly by Leatherface with a sledgehammer. Ah. 
That's the thing, though, also, as we're pausing in this little death count, is I love when Leatherface does kills that aren't just with the chainsaw. Obviously, I want to see the chainsaw kills. It's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But a sledgehammer sounds worse, in my opinion. Like, it's not going to be as quick. It's going to hurt. We have... Kenny, who was sliced in half by Leatherface with a chainsaw while impaled on a meat hook after being injured from being stabbed with said meat hook. Ryan was killed when Leatherface caused the van to crash, which happens in the movie. Nikki is accidentally shot by Officer Marvin, who was startled when she popped out of the fridge unexpectedly. That would that would suck. Like, that is the worst way to, uh surprise like as a cop you shouldn't be that trigger happy but you know i'm sure it happens we have officer marvin he was hacked to death by leatherface with an axe the skin on his face was then cut off by leatherface for his halloween costume mask being hacked to death with an axe also sounds worse than being killed with a chainsaw in my opinion not as cool as the sledgehammer because just the the brutality of it is a little bit different but i love when we get glimpses of the him wearing the skin as a mask of his victims like that is top tier one of my favorite things about this series we have ollie brown who was stabbed in the chest by heather with a pitchfork we have mayor burt hartman hand sliced off by leatherface with a chainsaw forcing him into a meat grinder where he is hacked apart anybody want some ground beef ha <laughs> ha that sounds horrible. Like, how much of that would you realistically feel before, like, your body goes in shock, before obviously you die? But, like, are you going to feel any of that meat grinder for even a split second before you die? Because uh, that sounds horrifying. We have Gavin Miller, who was killed by Leatherface with a chainsaw. So this is a, de these next two are debatable kills. They're from the post-credits scene. And then we have Arlene Miller, who was also killed by Leatherface with a chainsaw. Again, so those both, they say that they're debatable kills in the official kill count because they're post credit scenes. So it's one of those, are they technically in the timeline? It's up to speculation. Let's see, do I have any others? So we have the 2022 timeline. Nope. That is everybody. So like I said, this was more on the gory side, which I do enjoy. I feel like I should give this one three stars. Because knocking down a whole star for it being 3D was a bit much. But I didn't like it. Well, I did like it more than the last one, and I gave that one three stars. I need to be more consistent in my ratings. I think I am actually going to go ahead and give this one three stars. Because it was better than I give it credit for. I do like the gore aspect of it. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and give this one three stars as well. So, yeah, that is the movie. Again, this was Texas Chainsaw 3D. This is the one that came out in 2013. And, yeah, that's all the trivia. We have the kill count. And, as always... If you have any movies that you would like me to cover, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below because I would love some more horror movie recommendations. And yeah, as always, I will see you guys in the next one.